A movie mystery is nothing without a cunning villain, and the following motley crew of killers are so devious that they were concocting schemes and spinning yarns right under our very noses until it was almost too late. Figuring out exactly who murdered Colonel Mustard with the lead pipe in the library is all part of the fun when it comes to movie thrillers, but not everyone can spot the clues in advance. I personally am especially crap at it. I mean, the murderer could be wearing a big sign and I'd still be surprised when he stabs me in the back. This is mostly intentional though, as filmmakers want to keep you constantly guessing until the big reveal, yet there's always a telltale detail or two that gives the game away that you kick yourself for not noticing beforehand. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com, and these are nine more times the movie killer was hiding in plain sight. Number nine, Nick Ruskin kissed the girls. In this snazzy thriller, forensic psychologist Alex Cross desperately tracks his kidnapped niece, held captive by a serial killer known only as Casanova. Cross zeroes in on a slimy Californian plastic surgeon, but when he proves to be a red herring, the survivor finally remembers the location in the woods where she was being held. This successfully flushes out the new main suspect, Will Rudolph. So, case solved, well, not quite, as there are actually two killers in this dastardly tale. Thankfully, in the nick of time, Cross matches the handwriting from a postcard sent by the killer to that of Detective Nick Ruskin. As Casanova's a cop then, he knows exactly how to conceal evidence and stall the investigation, leading to the first big clue, that being the fact that there are no prints, fibres, hair, or any incriminating bodily fluids found at the scene of the crime. Now this is potentially a bit ambiguous, but a bigger clue comes later on at a press conference, where Cross cleverly observes, if the killer's not here, quote, he's watching, I'll guarantee you, end quote. Ruskin is indeed there, basking in the attention like most movie psychos. Number 8. Lady Mary Van Tassel, Sleepy Hollow Next, we have Blackadder's Queen Elizabeth, Miranda Richardson, who's lopping off heads in Tim Burton's wonderfully atmospheric gothic horror, Sleepy Hollow. The flick follows Ichabod Crane's investigation into the beheading of three people, seemingly at the hands of the Headless Horseman. He's bad news, but there's a devious mastermind controlling the killer who's, uh, even more bad news. The murders of Peter Van Garrett, his son, the pregnant widow, the magistrate, and the notary all point to a cover-up. This is a murder for profit, so who unleashed the horseman from hell and where can we get one? Despite multiple clues that point to the killer, the real clue is contained in one simple line from Crane himself, after he discovers the grave of the horseman. Here, the audience is told, quote, The horseman does not kill at random. His victims are chosen by someone who controls him, by that very person who took his skull, someone who knew where to dig, end quote. This narrows the culprits considerably, as the horseman's burial was witnessed by two young girls 20 years prior, but who are they? Well, Crane's romantic interest, Katrina, is way too young, so that leaves the only other main female character we have, and the one who stood to inherit the town's wealth, Lady Mary Van Tassel. Number 7. Simon Doyle, Death on the Nile when Proto Kardashian Lynette Ridgway is murdered on her honeymoon in Egypt, the obvious suspect is jealous Jacqueline Jackie de Belfort, once engaged to Simon Doyle, Lynette's new squeeze. It turns out that she is indeed behind the murder, but the problem is she has an airtight alibi. That being that during a furious and staged row with Simon aboard the ship, Jackie pretended to shoot him in the leg. She's then taken to her cabin and knocked out with a shot of morphine, so who shot Lynette? Well, accomplice Simon recovers the discarded pistol, races to Lynette's cabin, and sprays her brains over the pillow. He then returns to the lounge, shoots himself for real in the leg this time, and throws the gun overboard. Poirot is a little scamp though, and knows the depths of Jackie's obsession because she pretty much just straight out tells him at the start of the film, saying, quote, one must follow one star wherever it leads, even to hell itself, end quote. The next fatal giveaway comes when Angela Lansbury is shot right between the eyes after becoming a key witness in the crime. Jackie just can't stop running her mouth and gives the game away again here, saying, quote, My father taught me to be a crack shot. End quote. If she just shut up, she probably would have gotten away with his entire crime, but she completely gives the game away on numerous occasions. Number 6. Martin Vanger, the girl with the dragon tattoo. The girl with the dragon tattoo follows disgraced investigative journalist Michael Blomqvist and the ultimate badass cyberpunk hacker Elizabeth Salander, who are hired by Henrik Vanger to locate his missing niece Harriet. Wow, is that a mouthful. 
The tenacious pair uncover a series of murders stretching back 60 years, but how could only one man be behind all of these deaths? Well, it turns out Harriet's abusive father Gottfried is the killer, and after his death, Martin, Harriet's brother, continues the killing spree unaware that Harriet is actually still alive, having fled to England. It's a lovely, harrowing twist, but there's a massive clue around the middle of the movie that points to Martin's guilt. While hosting a dinner for Blomqvist, Martin hears a strange sound, almost like the wind whistling through his house. He excuses himself to retrieve more wine, leaving the journalist in the dining room. It seems like a strange detail to focus on here, but the wind is actually the screams of Martin's next victim, being held captive in his bespoke psycho dungeon beneath the house where much of the climax will take place. Number 5. Ruth Lang, The Ghost the Ghost is a weird movie about Ewan McGregor's nameless ghostwriter who's hired by ex-British PM Adam Lang to complete his memoirs, only to then suspect that Lang has actually been a willing CIA stooge since the 1970s. With the original ghostwriter Makara found dead in a highly suspicious suicide, McGregor uncovers a conspiracy that will lead to his own murder further on down the line, but not at the hands of Lang, rather his wife Ruth, the real CIA agent all along. If you didn't twig until the end of the movie, you definitely weren't alone, but it's Ruth herself who drops the big giveaways. While Lang is dealing with a diplomatic nightmare, the writer is left alone with Ruth and asks if her husband always takes her advice. She practically confesses her guilt right there, saying, quote, yes, and always takes it, until lately. Ruth also lets slip that she did a year of postgraduate political research, clue number two, and clearly where she met her CIA tutor and handler. The writer later meets with the British Foreign Secretary and learns that Makara tried to expose this very same conspiracy. He's then given the clue, it's all there in the beginning, which he assumes means the beginning of Lang's career, yet beginnings actually is meant literally, referring instead to the first word of each chapter in Makara's original draft, which spells Lang's wife Ruth was recruited as a CIA agent by Professor Paul Emmett. It literally does not get more cut and dry than that. Number 4. Dr. Charles Nichols, The Fugitive The Fugitive sees Dr. Richard Kimball framed for murder, forced to prove his innocence by tracking down his wife's killer, the one-armed man Sykes. Although Sykes does do the actual murdering, the search for the one-armed man is misdirection, as Dr. Charles Nichols is the brains behind the trigger. Nichols is unmasked as a greedy and thoroughly not good scientist, attempting to falsify research results so he can profit from Kimball's research project. Sometimes clues in these movies come in drips and drabs, but not in The Fugitive, which drops its biggest clue right at the very start. During the fundraiser that kicks off the film, Nichols thanks Kimball for the use of his car, telling him the keys are downstairs. This, however, is how the killer gains entry to Kimball's house and makes the break-in appear unforced, framing Kimball in the process. Number 3. Norman Spencer, What Lies Beneath from one Harrison Ford number to another, when Bob Zemeckis had the first half of Castaway in the can, he made this crafty Hitchcock-inspired ghost story while Tom Hanks lost sufficient weight to resume filming. In this flick, Claire Spencer becomes convinced that she's being haunted by the ghost of her missing next-door neighbour, but her husband, Ford's Dr. Norman Spencer, thinks that she's just being a silly old woman imagining things. You know, that classic husband in a thriller archetype. It turns out though that she's actually spot on, as it's revealed in very own Harrison Ford fashion that Norman has indeed murdered his lover, a student of his, after she threatened to expose their affair. There are plenty of clues here, with the first tip-off being Norman and his colleagues' discussion over the university's policy on dating students. You know, the kind of extremely relevant conversation topic that only ever happens in the movies. The real huge clue, though, comes when Claire visits Norman at his laboratory one night. A handy expositional lab technician explains the application of halothane, a paralytic drug that leaves a patient aware but unable to move. This is the focus of Norman's research, and the drug features heavily in the last act as Norman tries to drown his wife. Number 2. Jean-Francois, Brotherhood of the Wolf now this is an utterly unique French film that exceeds not only in combining sassy period drama, western, monster, horror, and a complex murder mystery, but it also has some impressive post-Matrix style martial arts as well. 
Grégoire de Fronsac is an adventurer recently returned from colonial America investigating a series of brutal murders in a remote rural French town, where peasants are being torn limb from limb by the beast of Gavorden. And oh look, I'm, I'm so sorry, I looked all of these pronunciations up before filming and I'm still mangling them completely. I can only vaguely do Jordy, never mind French, so I apologise. Anyway, the real villain of the piece is Jean Francois, an aristocratic psychopath with a 15 foot pet lion wearing plate armour that was bred during his stint in Africa. This, as it turns out, is the beast everyone is afraid of, and to be fair, I don't blame them. All of the clues in this film, though, come in the first hour of the movie. Jean Francois boasts to Franzac that he has travelled a great deal and refers to himself as a hunter, alluding to the origins of the beast in Africa. Jean Francois's motivation too becomes clear when Sister Marianne explains that the area was once a Templar stronghold, rife with heretics, something the fanatical Jean Francois cannot allow to return. There's one more important clue though, the beast actually spares Marianne because it can smell her brother, its master and the real villain Jean Francois. Number 1, Ransom Drysdale, Knives Out. Ryan Johnson returned from a galaxy far, far away with Knives Out, a homage to the classic Agatha Christie whodunits replete with a Poirot-esque super sleuth Benoit Black. In the pastiche, Nurse Marta believes that she has accidentally given billionaire publisher Harlan Thromby a lethal shot of morphine, and accepts the help of devious nephew Ransom, who then blackmails Marta believing that he has successfully framed her for the murder. We were kept guessing as to Ransom's true nature throughout the movie, but there were a couple of clues throughout, including this easily missed but massive giveaway. When Marta is sitting in Ransom's apartment, one of the five large brown glass jugs is clearly missing. The flammable liquid inside was enough to torch the coroner's office though, which destroyed the toxicology report and the only evidence of Marta's innocence. The old grandma also serves up a whopper of a clue, asking, Ransom, are you back again already on the night of the murder? Mistaking Marta for Ransom in the process. Why does she do that? Well, because Grandma has actually already seen Ransom climbing the walls that very night, sneaking in to switch Harlan's medication. Johnson even straight up tells us who the killer is before it's officially revealed. As Frank croaks, you did this, as Marta attempts to save her life, except in reality she's saying Hugh did this, Hugh being Ransom's real name. Clever, innit? So that's the list, let's know what you guys think down in the comments below. Did you pick up on any of these clues while you were watching these films? And have I missed any of this list? Either way, while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't thought I've been Josh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.